And welcome back to part three of this week's Yawa. If this is your first time to the channel, this is the first video of ours you are finding, hit the subscribe button, smash the like button now. And if emphasis you, on the smash. And if you want to hear about <laughs> our Alaskan adventure, you better check out at least part one, but most likely you should also check out part two of this week's Yawa because not only do we talk about Alaska and how amazing it was, but we also answered some really awesome questions. Now we're gonna answer some questions while I sip on Suburban, which for this episode happens to be Weller Antique 107. So this first question is from Matthias Mays. Finished every video over the last year. What? Which is awesome. That's insane. I am saying virtually impossible. Not literally impossible because you say you did it, but virtually impossible. We put out a lot of videos. So that's really awesome that you've been able to watch all of them. So Yawa question. You covered extensively the toys for puppies, but what toys do you keep in the house once they grow out of the puppy phase? The same ones or more of rope toys and or chew bones, just like the ones on your store website? It's a great question. FYI, shout out to the store for all other viewers. I ordered a leash and e-collar and it was shipped within a week. If only customs cooperated a bit more, I would have gotten it in a couple of weeks to Belgium. So. That's awesome. Thank you very much for your support and for being a fan. And I'm glad we were able to get your order shipped out quickly. We're usually pretty Johnny on the spot, but every once in a while, since we're a small business and not Amazon, it does take a little bit longer. Sometimes, but uh, we've got some extra help. Uh, the store's grown enough that we actually have an employee helping with that now, which is a huge benefit. Benefit. Um, as well as help things to get out pretty quick for everybody. Yeah, so this is a really good question though because it's one thing that we don't really talk about all that often is what do we give our adult dogs as far as toys or treats to entertain them? So when we've got puppies around, which for us, we have puppies around a lot. Pretty I mean, regular. We've got Thunder yeah. and we've got Clutch right now and they have their puppy toys. And so when they're out, when some of the adult dogs are out, the adults get to share with those puppy toys. Um, you have to watch them though, because they tend to <coughs> grandpa, um, try and swallow them whole. Yeah. Try and eat them, chew things off, destroy them really, 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 really fast. And ultimately they are toys for puppies, not toys for adult dogs. Yeah. So our go-to toys though, for the adults are rope toys. Like you mentioned, uh, we have really, really liked the rope toys with the antler chew on it. And all of our dogs have also loved those. They are on our store. Mm -hmm. um, Big Sky Antler Chews. Um, we're using the larger of the two sizes that we offer for the adult dogs because the small ones, they are also able to chew through pretty quickly. I think they're listed as medium and large on there. Or Let small look. and medium. Maybe. I'm not 100% sure, but of the two sizes, the bigger size for adult dogs. And they really like those. Not only do they like the rope toy, but they also like chewing on that antler piece. And then primarily we give chews, um, whether it's an antler. So I just went to uh, standingstonekennels.com, hit the store button on the top right side under the, or if you're on a web browser, it's going to be along the top, but just hit store. Then it comes up, gives me categories, and I'm clicking on chews and toys right now which uh, on your mobile version allows you to scroll through all of this goodness. And we get down here to the they are. big sky antler rope toy, as Kat was mentioning. And our size selections are small and medium. You're right. Oh. There's a large, but the large was kind of uh, large. large. And these are primarily for puppies and or... Our adult dogs, Our adult like, dogs the like the medium size. Uh, speaking of adult dogs that like the medium size or any of the sizes, it would be Grandpa Rex. Rex is uh, the mm, a local house ornament now, if you will. He's pretty much not visible anywhere. You, I mean, you can't walk through a house without bumping into Grandpa. He's just yeah. here always. He's, yeah, he's on the couch. He's in the bed. He's on a dog bed. He's sunning himself. He's just out and about. And currently, our shipping center, if you will, oh is in God. the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know where this it, is. This is in the office behind us. Well, Rex loves to help ship in the morning. That's usually when we get stuff. We try and tackle it all first thing in the morning before the sun comes up. And he's in there on a dog bed, Coran dog bed, by the way. He loves to curl up in the little bed with the bolster. The dogs really like to kind of cozy into those. And he 
you walk out to go get a cup of coffee or do something or go to the garage, which is the extension of the shipping center. And he snatches himself another rope toy with an antler on it. I mean, the dude has stolen about eight out of the the stack of stuff that's ready to be shipped out. Like we bring in stuff to get boxed up in the office right now and come back. It's like, where is the antler toy that I got? Grandpa stole it. it. He's got it in the other room, chewing it up on the couch, (laughs) leaves the the label on. I was like, maybe we should just ship ship this out with a note from grandpa saying, sorry, I got a, a, quick chew on it before quality just control quality control or something taste no. test no we're not sending out a use crap but grandpa loves he them he keeps them stealing them and that's the number one i mean stuff's out there's stuff out fairly regularly that he does not get into but those he steals <laughs> loves yes. the things so those antler rope toys as well as the pork chumps um baked rolls they really we, like those a lot too yes and a big um if money saver if you will even we buy and we use for our dogs here the big 18 count rolled and I think they're like eight chunks. inches long. Yes, they are. And I take and I cut them right in half. And every morning, all the dogs are up, hanging out on their dog beds. I give them each a, a quarter chunk. It's just enough that doesn't really seem to upset their stomach, gives them something to chew on. It takes most of them probably 30 minutes to 40 minutes to chew through one. Not quite an hour probably, but usually not less than 30 minutes. So somewhere in that vicinity, over 30 minutes to chew them up and and then it's um, still really easy on their digestion, which is good. Yep. So those, uh, you know, if you're looking for a best bang for your buck, I've done the math. It is those rolled, uh, 18 count of the rolled pork chomps and I cut them in half, makes them really affordable. All right. What do we got for the next question? So this is a really good question from Zachary Stoltz. What is the best way to get into bird hunting with a dog without breaking the bank? Ooh. You guys do great work. And this was a really good question because, A, you just talked about, you know, best bang for your buck. And we are headed into nice hunting season oh. as we speak, basically. I mean, beginning of September, dove season's opening up. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. And then there's going to be teal. And then there's going to be where, depending on where you're at exactly in the States, um, Lots and lots of hunting opportunities coming up. So how do you get into hunting without breaking the bank? Well, I'm going to say with a dog. Okay. So I'm going to say starting off in order to get into hunting, one of the most important things that you need that kind of can't be band-aided together or makeshift with other stuff that you have maybe is you need a shotgun. If you don't have a shotgun, you can't really go bird hunting Unless you're going to get in the archery aspect of it, but that's a whole different ballgame and yeah. insanity, essentially. Um, and not on not the, even not on the cheap zone. No, anyway. it, you're gonna burn through more arrows in. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna go into. You need a shotgun now. I would say Cat and I shoot Beretta shotguns. Have for a long time. Love them. They are not the top top dollar but they are a higher dollar shotgun they last they hold up well we shoot a lot which is important uh, to have a little higher end stuff Um, but before that my first shotgun and still a quality company today is tristar they make uh, a really nice semi-automatic shotgun it's called the uh, viper g2 viper viper g2 i always get mixed up exactly but you'll find it. It's, um, their semi-automatic shotgun comes in 20 or 12. It's a really high quality gun shoots like a tank. I mean, it's not the fastest thing in the whole world, but it never, I've not had any issues with mine misfiring. I got it, uh, it was sent out to me from a guy, um, a buddy of mine who owns a, a company where you can actually buy them or you can buy other guns, spare change defense. And again, he's providing quality deals and, uh, trying to help the, the average guy out with his gun shop. So sparechangedefense.com. Um, Doyle will get you hooked up. But TriStar makes a quality shotgun. So step one, get a shotgun. Yes. Step two, if you want to hunt with a dog, you got to have a dog. Um, and getting- this would be a place. I don't know if this is exactly where you're going this exact second, but this would be the place that I wouldn't. Bang for your buck. 
I mean, a you lot of times you get what you pay for. A lot of times, and yeah, yeah, there's gonna be somebody that throws in the comments that I got my dog for free and it's the best dang dog I've ever had in my life. And you may have had that happen, and you're lucky. That doesn't always happen, and you are going to typically be better off paying a little more for a dog that has a health clearances, yep. that the parents are healthy that you know that those dogs are out of hunting lines. So you're going to get a dog that's going to be natural as far as coming into hunting, knowing what they need to do with a minimum amount of training to get them there. There's no such thing as a free dog. I mean, they're just not. And you got to go get them shots. And then sometimes there's something going on that you got to do that. I mean, you're going to end up spending the same money that you would on the quality puppet, the veterinarian, a lot of times. So Definitely. Um, and then on top of that, the dog that's well-bred and this doesn't, I mean, there are quality dogs in different breeds at different price ranges. You don't have to go buy the most expensive dog you could ever find, but everybody has a budget. We get that, but do your diligence, find somebody that's done some health clearances, has put the time, effort, and energy, not just said, we love our dogs and they're good. So we wanted to breed them. Um, but can prove to you that they're quality dogs and everything else. And if you find somebody in that niche that has those things that you feel comfortable with, you're going to end up with a good dog and it's going to be a lot easier to train them, a lot less expensive to get them to the point where they're ready to go hunting with you. Yeah. And you definitely want your dog to be ready to hunt, even if it's from a well-bred program and out of hunting lines. That doesn't necessarily mean it's just going to be ready to go hunting. It still needs some exposure to things like a bird intro, a gun intro. We actually talk about in another video, the prerequisites that you must have before you take your dog hunting. So I would Correct. definitely recommend checking that video out, um, especially coming into hunting season to make sure that your dog really is ready to go hunting so that you don't create problems by taking them when they're unprepared. But um, if you get a dog that's high quality, mm -hmm. that has the natural ability to be a good hunting dog, you most likely can do a lot of the beginning training and get them ready to go hunting yourself. If you're on our YouTube channel now watching this, if you go to our channel page by clicking on standing stone kennels anywhere that you see that, it will take you to our channel. And then you can hit playlist and it actually shows step-by-step step in order what we taught several different dogs, including Quest and Rogue and Sprig and Mac, I think has got a playlist mm -hmm. in there. Um, and then Fox has got a starting playlist and there's a lot of different playlists that show the introductory work into getting and prepping your dog for hunting season. Yeah. And then if you need a little more help than just following along with the videos, we do have an online dog training community on Patreon where we can actually give you feedback and help you work with your dog through video exchanges, through live video chats to help you train your dog and get them ready for hunting season. So you can save some money instead of sending your dog off for training, which yes, can get expensive. So now we have a shotgun and we have a bird dog. Those are the two most important things to get into it. And, and probably the most basic, expensive. And the basic training of your bird dog. Yep. And probably the most expense that you're going to have wrapped up into it if you're trying to do this on the dollar. The next thing is if you are just learning how to hunt, uh, I would assume in this process of gun and bird dog, you will have found a mentor uh, or come across somebody that can help you a little bit. But One of your friends likes to hunt and they're taking you under their wing. But a mentor is going to be beneficial, but then the rest of it isn't that big of a deal. You can wear what other, whatever clothing that you, you want, essentially, as long as you're following state regulations, which in upland hunting, um, orange is a good recommendation from a safety standpoint, but not required. But the rest of it is just something that feels comfortable to hike through the grass. You can wear your blue jeans. You can wear a good pair of boots that you've got. And then, uh, you know, enough warmth to stay, depending on what time of year it is. And a bird vest. You can find bird vests for 30 or 40 bucks, uh, game hide or some, there's a, you know, there's always some kind of brand of a standard bird vest that can hold some shotgun shells. It can hold some birds if you end up killing something. Um, and then you need a hunting license. And when you go to pick up your hunting license, depending on what your state you're in, you can find maps to all of the public hunting ground in your area. Um, Kansas has a ton. I know Nebraska has a fair amount. Um, Iowa has some. And definitely depending on what state you're in, it may be called something different, but it is public access land. Yep. So in Kansas, it's a lot of it. There's state ground, uh, but there's also, uh, I refer to it as Weehaw. 
It's walk-in hunting areas, W-I-H-A. And all of those have slightly different regulations, but they show them right there on the signs. It'll say shotgun only, archery only. Um, you only have access during specific times, but it tells you all of those things. But you can get maps to all of this stuff. Um, even out uh, west and northwest, you can get on BLM land, which is block management. Please correct me, throw it in the comments, tell me exactly what BLM stands for. But um, it is, again, your public access ground. Um, some of it is private owned where the state pays them to allow you to hunt on it. Some of it is state ground. All of these things, there's plenty of places, South Dakota, Kansas, Nebraska, North Dakota, Iowa. I don't know that I've specifically hunted public ground in Missouri, but I'm sure that there is some. Uh, Minnesota has a ton of state ground. I know Wisconsin has state ground. All of these different places have that have access to birds. Um, these are areas that I have hunted, but other states have something. You can find that right where you're buying your hunting license or online. You have access to this. So that was a really good question, especially coming up on hunting season. And I think we have time for one last question. And this one's for Ethan. Mm. And we have to end on this because I about busted a gut when I read this comment. Oh, goody. Mr. Bathtub, I got me the most important question ever asked for a yacht. Wait, 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 wait. The guy's I'm reading name it is verbatim. Mr. Batham? Yep. Bathtub? Yep, I'm reading it verbatim. Got it. I was like, wait a second, is my name now Mr. Bathtub? Okay, Mr. Bathtub is asking the question. Knowing, of course, that Ethan is taken <clears throat> by yours truly, but does he have a brother who is single <laughs> and ready to mingle? <laughs> Well, Mr. Bathtub, I believe on that note, I am out of bourbon and we are out of time. <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching. I'm the guy with the pink gun. I'm Cat the Dog Trainer. And we will see you in the next video.